All right, so you want to make a go-kart or mini bike seat. This is the one that I just made, and I'm going to show you how to do it step by step. So I'm going to show you how to cut out the wood, padding, soak the vinyl, maybe put a pattern on top, put piping on it, and put it all together. So this video is going to show you how to do it step by step. So let's start with the first thing, plywood. I'm using actual plywood, not OSB, but actual strips of wood and it's about a half an inch long and I'm making a taper on it. So I'm using a circular saw to cut everything out and it goes from a wide back to a more narrow front. I also marked up all the spots where I'm going to drill holes to attach the frame. Now once you cut everything out, the edges might be sharp. Uh, so you don't have to do this, but what I did is used a jigsaw to round out the edges. That'll prevent the vinyl from stretching or having a funny corner poking out that just looks kind of, kind of poor in my opinion. All right, so the next thing you want to do is drill out the holes. Uh, these holes are how you attach the plywood base to the frame. And we'll show you what we're going to do with those holes in a minute. But I also used a router, again, for looks and to keep the vinyl from, from stretching out too much. So that would be the very bottom, the part that faces down. It's facing the camera right now. All right. So, next step is you want to install T-nuts. That's just the letter T, nut. Uh, basically, these T-nuts will prevent the wood from stripping out when you run a, a bolt through it. It's essential to have these on there because if you have ever attached something uh, like wood to a bolt, it'll strip out, especially when you're riding around. It'll just break over time. It'll vibrate loose. So that provides the threads and will keep it from stripping out. So the next step you want to do is use your high density foam and put a little bit, maybe an inch and a half, well, half inch to an inch overlap on the edges. And then you use a reciprocating knife. This is actually a fish filleting knife that I have. And it goes through the padding just like butter. So as you can see, it did an excellent job of cutting everything out. Now this is also an optional part, but let's say you want to have a little hump on the back of the seat or a little riser, you can cut out the padding like that, or you can just add a little bit more uh, on the very back. I'm, I added some spray adhesive to it and just glued it right together and that'll make uh, more, more of a permanent bond than anything. Now I found out after I did all of this that it all compressed down anyway, so if you want to put a hump on it, it really doesn't matter. If you cut it out, I would say leave the padding there. This next thing that I have here is called scrim. Uh, this is the padding that goes right underneath the top of the seat. Uh, you do not have to do this. Again, it's optional, but it shrinks, so I'm just, you know, running it under hot water, tossing it in the dryer. What this scrim will do was, was will basically be to create a pillow top effect. Um, you'll see what I mean by that in a minute, but I actually chose 1 8 inch scrim instead of one half or three quarter inch, which you should probably use if you want a really nice pillow top effect. But um, because I didn't want to have a huge pillow top effect. Uh, it just adds a nice little puff to it with, it with whatever pattern you put on it, whether it be lines or diamonds or whatever you want. Uh, then I'm using just a little bit of glue to glue the scrim to the vinyl. It's very important that you do this if you decide to put a pattern on the top because it will prevent the sewing machine from bunching it up. So I'm just using a little marking pencil to mark out where I'm going to be putting the pattern and using a um, 45 degree angle. You know, I love working with kids, you know, it's always a struggle. But. Intermission time! Alright, so now we're back at it. Uh, like I said, put it on a 45 degree angle from the center line and I'm just sewing lines over top of the top part of the vinyl and the scrim. So that's what the pattern looks like. Uh, it's kind of a slight pillow top effect and then I'm using welting or piping. It's known as piping or welting. This is just vinyl piping. Um, I got all this stuff off of eBay by the way. It's pretty cheap. And then that's kind of the border from where the top will transition to the sides of the seat. Uh, making sure to cut off just enough so I can sew some more on the edges. 
All right, so if you notice, this is uh, the sides of the seat, and I'm leaving a little bit on the edges. And I notice I made a little clip right there with the scissors. You can't see it in the camera, but basically, if you leave extra on both edges, where the seam is gonna come together and overlap, you can actually create uh, only one seam for the skirt around the seat. And where that mark was, was where they were matching up perfectly. So make sure it all matches up perfectly, then make the final seam, run it the length, try to keep it um, parallel with, with the seat. And then after you do that, you wanna cut out the extra. You don't wanna have extra vinyl poking out from your uh, padding or your high density foam and then you complete the final seam. It's a very straightforward easy process and um, you know I usually put this on the back of a seat you know the seam can kind of be in somewhere where it's out of the way where you don't have to look at it. So there's the padding attached to the board I just glued it on there. Notice how there's extra padding on the edges that's very important because you don't want the edges of the board to show through the final because that padding does compress. And I'm taking the pad or the, the seat and I'm just covering it with um, this upholstery for the seat. Um, you do kind of have to work it a little bit, cram it down in there, um, work it back and forth, and then I'm just using a staple gun with you know, standard staples in it, just like you, you know, using construction to staple the vinyl to the bottom of the seat. Now I'm using a razor blade to cut off the excess vinyl and we're almost done. Uh, I just have to cut a little bit uh, for the other areas. Um, these other areas are for the T-nuts to go through. And then where I did any marking with a pencil, I just used an eraser to and get rid of the pattern. It's some pretty fast <laughs> pencil erasing right there. The glories of video editing, right? So there you have it. There's the mini bike seat. It's not really going on a mini bike. It's going on something a little, little snazzier. I've got a link in the description for this vehicle that it's going on. It's going to T-Man from a different channel. So if you want to check it out, um, he's going to be posting a few videos on it soon. But these are some other seats I made. These are some seats I made for a go-kart that I restored. It really, really looks good when you do it right, when you do it with piping, and you get it all sewn up. This is another go-kart I also restored. Um, and this is actually the first go-kart I ever had and that I bought for my kids. Um, so yeah, and there's the thing T-Man made. So if you like this video, you thought it was educational, you could get something out of it, please give the video a thumbs up, like, and if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that as well. Thanks.